We all face one particular difficult choice in our lives, and that is, what is the path that we should choose? Spanish conquest of the Philippines gives us a great historical example of someone having to choose a path for a future of another people. In 1543, the Holy Roman Emperor, King of Spain, the Lord of the Netherlands, Charles V, did not know anything about the Cagayanese or the Igorot people of Luzon Island. Around the same time, Lahinam and Dari was born on the banks of the Cagayan River. He would grow up like his father and father before him, fishing the Cagayan River and hunting around Kalo Cave. He would trade the gold with the Isinai, Gadang, and Ifagao people from the mountain. He would sell this gold to Japanese merchant ships stationed in Lalo. In 1595, he was recorded as the chief of the village of Tubigirao. Emperor Charles V did not know Lahimandari, nor the other chiefs of the Cagayan Valley. He did not know their struggles, hunting practices, or the system of governance they had. This would not stop Charles V from decreeing. The Indos should be reduced to towns and not live separate and scattered through the ranges and mountains, deprived of all the spiritual and temporal benefits. This decree over the next 400 years would cause Lihamandari's children and their children to be harassed, starved, and enslaved. It would also lead them to join the larger world community which they had been isolated from their whole existence. For over a thousand years, Hindus, Muslim, Chinese, and Japanese merchants had been coming to Luzon Island. The first description given of Luzon Island comes from Xiao Jiequa, a Chinese merchant who wrote between 1200 to 1300 AD, he described Luzon as follows. The country Mayi is located north of Poni. About 1,000 families inhabit the shores of the river, which has many windings. The natives dress in linen, wearing clothes that look like sheets, or they cover their bodies with sarongs. In the thick woods are scattered copper statues of Buddha, but no one could tell the origin of those statues. Pirates seldom visit those districts. When Chinese merchantmen arrive at the port, they cast anchor at a place called the Place of Mandarins. In order to trade, the savage traders are assembled and have food carried in baskets. And, and although the bearers are often unknown, none of the goods are ever lost or stolen. The savage traders transport these goods to their islands. The products of that country are yellow wax, cotton, pearls, shells, beetle nuts, and jute textiles. Foreign traders import porcelain, commercial gold, iron vases for perfume, leaden objects, glass, pearls, and of color, and iron needles. One important thing to note is in this description is that gold was imported. Yet, when the Spanish arrive, it is the gold mines of the Igorot people that will be extracted from, and the gold will flow from the mountains down to the valleys, and it will become a primary trading source for the people of Luzon Island. The lesson I learned from the choice of Charles V is that all decisions result in good and bad consequences. As we all get older and take on more responsibility, we must learn to pick a path. Charles V had great responsibility, and he picked a path for the people of Luzon. As we will learn from the stories of the Cagayan Valley through the next episodes, a clear pattern will emerge. When people in position of power make choices that they believe will help themselves and others, usually great prosperity and unity comes from those choices. However, when people in positions of power make decisions that only benefit themselves, usually pain and suffering follow. Charles V's decision to subjugate the people of the islands that we now know as the Philippines is a great historical example 
of the consequences of choices.